Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it is I, the Umbreon Messiah, and welcome back to Let's Play Portal 2, Chapter 6, The Fall. Well, as you can sort of see, uh, calling Wheatley a moron was not the brightest idea, as he punched us back down into the elevator shaft and broke the elevator. <laughs> now, if you'll remember, Wheatley once told us that we were only looking at the upper level of Aperture Science. The rest of Aperture Science extended downwards into the ground for miles and miles. But it was all sealed up years ago. Wheatley's rage seems to have plummeted us into the long-forgotten depths of Aperture Science's original incarnation. Seeing as how there's no one down here anymore since, well, GLaDOS is a potato and that bird took her away. We're on our own, trying to navigate the long-forgotten and very disused underbelly of Aperture Science. So, first of all, our first goal is to get out of the starting area down here, so it's going to be a lot of portal to this area sort of puzzle. Nothing all that difficult. We've done harder ones already, so I'm not going to bore you with too many details. What is interesting to note, though, is that there has been a lot of hinting as to what's been going to happen in this game already. It's just a matter of whether or not you've noticed it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, because if I explain it, it's not as cool as when you figure it out yourself. Oh. My. This is the first time you start to get that feeling that Aperture Science is a whole lot bigger than you already thought it was, and you already sort of thought it was incredibly massive. I don't know about you, but I don't think someone wants us in here. Condemned testing area. Hmm. Well, the door doesn't work, and we can clearly see there's stuff beyond this area. And that door doesn't work either, but there is a portal wall over here, which means somewhere around here there has to be a place we can... Aha! There we are. So, let's put our first portal over there, and our second one up there. This gets us out in the open, where we will find another portal wall, and if we look down there, we'll see yet another one. Keep out, do not enter. Well, looks like we can't go back from here, folks, so let's keep trudging on. Actually, I lied. We can, but I don't think that's going to help us much, considering we can't really climb back up the elevator shaft. Now, as you can tell, there was a lot of work put into making Aperture Science, but the architecture that we're looking at now is not precisely the same that we've been seeing all game. In fact, it seems... Uh, I wouldn't say ancient, but I would say older. Much older. A much older design for a much older time. Remember, Aperture Science has been around since about, oh, I think it was the 50s? Or was it the 70s? I don't remember which one, but 
It's been around for a while, and that is one big door. Well, our first goal here in the underground of Aperture Science, or, uh, well, I guess I should keep calling it the underbelly because underground gives you the feeling that we're not that far underground and we're several miles underground, but I'm toting semantics now. <coughs> our first job is to open this door. Now, you'll notice that there are these numbered booths with a countdown timer on it. Part of the seal for the underground laboratory was this dual lock system, sort of the same idea you have behind a nuclear launch. Uh, a little extreme if you ask me, but, you know, you didn't ask me, so. Uh, since we have to push both buttons at a relatively same time, we're going to have to use our portals to get to one side to the other so that it doesn't cancel out. So, hatch reclusion override, starting in now. And we walk through our portal and press that button before the timer runs out. And holy cow. It's opening, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be impressive. You gotta be kidding me. Hmm. Well, okay, maybe that's not as impressive as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Let's just make our way up the stairs here. Yeah, that is an old-fashioned push door, a chair, and what looks like a stool. Oh my. Well, anyway... Now we've sort of made it inside old Aperture Science, and as you can tell, it's definitely not as high-tech as the stuff we've been looking at previously. I think I've already sort of brought that point up, but it bears repeating, because you're going to start seeing some really interesting things soon. Such as this. I don't know why they'd fill an entire lake's worth with this burning goo stuff, but hey, whatever. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Now, off in the distance, you can see an old Aperture Science logo. And you can also see some of this old facility falling apart as we speak. A very large tower and... What appears to be a caged sphere. I don't know what that is up there, but it looks important. Now, if you look in here, you can sort of see the inside of this area, so we're just going to use our portals to get in there. Hey, look, there's a pull lever here. Which I assume will turn the power on so we can get inside. Whoa, what's this? you've just heard, well, the voice is, were Cave Johnson, former CEO and controlling member of Aperture Science Incorporated, or as it was called back then, Aperture Science Innovators. And the other voice you heard was Carolyn, his lovely assistant, who is apparently married to science. It seems we've gone back to the days of old, when Aperture Science was brand new, and they were hiring, <clears throat> I believe, war heroes and astronauts to do their testing. Now, all of that advertising seemed pretty cool, but I can't help but notice that Aperture Science became a lot different in, in between eras. Now, obviously, Cave Johnson is long since dead. That was a pre-recorded message, as he'll probably bring up later, as Cave Johnson obviously doesn't expect people to still be down here if he was still alive. 
the uh, recorded messages are some of the funnier bits in the show. Or, I should say, game, not the show, even though it sort of feels like a show sometimes. And they're well worth listening to. They will make you laugh, whether you want to or not. Alright, well, our first goal is to get to the next area. Well, no, I shouldn't say first goal, but that elevator is completely boarded up and we can't use it to get to the surface, so we're just going to have to use our portals to get a little inventive. Oh my god, 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 ah! Ow! Well, at least this door seems to work. Well, that's interesting. To say that Cave Johnson's um, understanding of what science is, is questionable would be an understatement. But more importantly, if you look at the desks and such in here, you'll notice that everything here is from a different age. If I'd have to put it in, in, at the 50s. You know, red velvet carpet... Everything here would probably have run this company a whole lot of money back in the day. Over here we have a picture of Cave Johnson. And over here we have several awards. The Spirit of Idaho for National Potato Board for the Promotion of Potato Science. Cave Johnson, Shower Curtain Salesman of 1943 Aperture Fixtures. And over here we have U.S. Department of Defense Contractor of the Year Runner Up. Runner Up? Runner-up? Who would they have lost to? Best New Science Company? Best Shower Curtain Salesman? Top 100 Applied Science Companies. 1949, Aperture Science got number two. Hmm. The future is here and it's under the Earth's crust. Science Maverick. Local entrepreneur buys salt mine. Huh. Well, I wonder who they could have been number two to. Of course, if you know anything about portal lore, you'll already know the answer to that question, but I'm not going to bring it up until Cave brings it up himself. Now, over here, you'll find one of the last working elevators in the joint, since we turned all the power back on, anyway. As Cave mentioned, these are his enrichment spheres, where he did all of his rather ridiculous testing. And it's starting to look like, in order to get back to the surface, we're going to have to go through a lot of them. Caution. Do not fall down elevator shaft. <sighs> Sounds like good advice to me. Now, if you look over here, we have a few old testing chambers that doesn't ha don't have a bridge associated with them anymore. Now, there's actually an achievement for uh, listening to the playbys that are associated with each door, so I'm going to show you what they are. If you've cut yourself at all in the course of these tests, you might have noticed that your blood is pure gasoline. That's normal. We've been shooting you with an invisible laser that's supposed to turn blood into gasoline, so all that means is it's working. Um, no OHSA compliance indeed. If you need to go to the bathroom after this next series of tests, please let a test associate know, because in all likelihood, whatever comes out of you is going to be cold. Only temporary, so do not worry. If it persists for a week, though, start worrying and come see us because that's not supposed to happen. Just a heads up, we're going to have a superconductor turned up full blast and pointed at you for the duration of this next test. I'll be honest, we're throwing science at the wall here to see what sticks. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. How did this man ever become the CEO of a science company? Anyway... It looks like there is a room over here. And since it's literally the only place we can really seem to go right at the moment, I would highly suggest going there. 
The only question is how? Well, if you remember earlier, this sign told us what not to do in this situation, but I'm starting to think it might be an actually good idea to fall down the elevator shaft because if you look at the bottom of the elevator shaft, there is actually a portal surface down there. So if we put the portal there and then our next portal on that little outing there, I think we might get some results. Well, time to cave Johnson this stuff. Alley-oop! Just barely made it. Holy cow. Alright, well, opening this door gets us into what is called Pump Station Alpha. Now, I can't really imagine what they would be pumping, but in this case, it looks like gel pressure control. Well, since the door won't open until we push it on, I say we turn it on and see what happens. Now, it seems to be making a lot of noise, so I would assume that means that the gel pump is working. Uh-oh. That looks like another inaccessible door. So I think what we're going to have to do here is portal up to that wall. Now, oh, what's the worst that could happen, right? Ah, oh, there we are. Alright, and once we get here, you'll see that, <laughs> once again, most of the railing has been destroyed. So we're going to have to improvise a uh, way around by following the this tube. And over here we have what looks like an elevator fitted with a 1950s version of the Emancipation Grill. Huh. Seems Aperture Science is pretty ahead of its time. Even for being full of stark raving lunatics. Looks like the facility turned itself on. Oh dear. Well, as we get in here, you'll see a little advisor sign that says, Do you know, repulsion gel was Aperture's first attempt to create a dietetic pudding substitute. It's true, the gel is a sweeter, slightly less non-toxic form of fiberglass insulation that causes subsequently in ingested food items to bounce off the lining of a dieter's distended stomach and out his or her mouth. For various reasons, this product was pulled from shelves. Oh my. Anyway, this blue paint sort of stuff is repulsion gel, and as the name might suggest, it repulses you. And by repulsing you, it means makes you bounce. And make some cool music when it does so. Now, things to note about repulsion gel, as you'll soon notice as I bring us up to the next level here with this button, which is supposed to open the door, is that repulsion gel will always bounce you up to the previous site you were at when you hit it. So, it makes for some pretty interesting puzzles. It'll even bounce around physics objects like that box. Huh, so this is the 1950s version of the storage cube, huh? Kinda homely. I like it, though. Alright, well, that's our first well, test. Just informed me that I should not have mentioned the control group. They're telling me I ought to stop making these pre-recorded messages. That gave me an idea. Make more pre-recorded messages. If I pay the bills here, I can talk about the control group all damn day. <laughs> Once again, Cave Johnson's sterling intellect. All right, now we'll see some more portable surfaces up there, so we're going to have to improvise our way around the test track a little bit more. And I believe we're going to get another message from Cave here in a moment. For this next test, we put nanoparticles in the gel. In layman's terms, that's a billion little gizmos that are going to travel into your bloodstream and pump experimental genes and RNA molecules and so forth into your tumors. Now, maybe you don't have any tumors. Well, don't worry. If you sat on a moldy chair in the lobby and work where we live, 
Um... I don't precisely think that's legal, Cave. In any event, we're going to see a little reprise from the first game over here in terms of this platform here. Just going to have to get ourselves up to this wall and drop ourselves down. Now, in case you're wondering, how were the people from the 50s and 60s supposed to accomplish all of this on their own? They weren't. Apparently, the portal device, or as it was known back then as the excursion funnel, was actually already created. I really don't know how that's possible, but it's aperture science, so I'm really not going to question it. In fact, it's probably better for my health that I don't. Now, over here, we have an interesting idea, uh, covering the walls in repulsion gel, so let's give this a try. Whoa! Oh my! Oh, whoa! That was interesting. Now, it's sort of important that you don't fall down the hole in the floor. So try not to. And since we already know we can't take stuff through the, uh... Emancipation Grill, we're not even gonna try. That opened up a panel in the wall over here for our lovely little... Uh, excursion funnel. <laughs> Uh, now that I've heard it called Excursion Funnel, I just want to keep calling it that. Boing. And here's the exit. Oh, in case you got covered in that repulsion gel, here's some advice the lab boy gave me. Do not get covered in the repulsion gel. We haven't entirely nailed down what element it is yet, but I'll tell you this, it's a lively one, and it does not like the human skeleton. That does not bode well. Alright, well, we're going to take this elevator up to the next level of tests. And hopefully nothing bad will happen to us. Hopefully. I'm... I'm not posting any expectations. All these science fears are made of asbestos, by the way. Keeps out the rats. Let us know if you feel a shortness of breath, a persistent dry cough, or your heart stopping. Because that's not part of the test. That's asbestos. Good news is the lab boys say the symptoms of asbestos poisoning show a median latency of 44.6 years. So if you're 30 or older, you're laughing. Worst case scenario, you miss out on a few rounds of canasta. Plus, you forwarded the cause of science by three centuries. I punch those numbers into my calculator and makes a happy face. <laughs> uh, I think that's my favorite line from the game. Anyway, this is one of the small criticisms that Portal 2 received is that some of the new areas are so absolutely massive that it takes a while to figure out where you're supposed to go. In this case, we're supposed to be going up there. Now, good luck figuring that one out on your own without tearing your skull out. Alright, now that we're here, gotta look for the next place to Portal 2, which I believe is, yes, in this room over here. Boink. I like your style. You make up your own rules, just like me. Bean counter said I couldn't fire a man just for being in a wheelchair. Did it anyway. Ramps are expensive. Oh my. Okay, well, we're going to push this button here, and what it's going to do is start dropping repulsion gel out of the ceiling. The idea here is we need to cover this room in certain places in order to. Oh my. In order to cover it in repulsion gel. Splat. And try it right there. Give that a couple of splashes. Sploosh. Okay, so that should give us some ample coverage. Let's put some up there just for happy fun times. As I believe that's where we have to head next. Boing! Alright, well now you can see where the exit is, which is important. We're also going to need some repulsion gel over here, I think. Oh my. Splash! Okay. So let's make our way up there. Okay. 
now what we have is a fairly interesting moment where I believe I actually needed to get some repulsion gel somewhere I haven't gotten it yet. I don't know how precisely I'm going to do that. But I figure I don't really have to... Oh, yes, I see now. Ha ha ha. I'm a silly man. And you're an even sillier man for following me. Or woman. I don't know. Using the portal, because for some reason the Aperture Science Emancipation Grill doesn't get rid of chill, we can use that as our way through. And now just give us a little momentum boost. Bounce! And we're to the exit! Huh. 